communities together on secularsounds.org. Zach Hemsey is an American recording artist and composer whose work has been largely popularized through its use in film trailers. Mind Heist was also used for the introduction to the video game Madden NFL 12 and is sometimes used by the show America's Got Talent. You are listening to Seclo Sounds. Find us on the interweb at www.seclosounds.org. I then went on to ask Zach where the idea for metronomes came from. Well, just writing various ideas, but metronomes just stuck out for me as something that I want to tell that story. I really want to direct it. I knew that I wanted to write it myself. Yeah, I just... It's just very personal to me, and there's there's a lot of themes in it that I didn't realize until reading it back that they were just extremely personal themes. Right, so um, you talk about some of the, the personal themes and things about... Obviously, you don't want to give too much away, but um, presumably there were there were some scenes in Metronomes then that were may have been particularly hard to write. No, it it just it all came very naturally. It was just I didn't realise until reading it back and then looking at things that were happening around me or in my life. I didn't realise that it was actually just subconsciously inspired some way. Um, I've heard writers talk about that before but they don't realize even after finishing the film that they've actually just put very personal things in there and it just happened to be that way right so um we, we've not really described what metronomes is about we've said it's got ectoplasm in it and i think we mentioned it there's a bit of science fiction about it could, could you give us a thumbnail sketch about what it's about a vague idea would be that it is about a very old entrepreneur who has a very large empire and he's basically looking to merge his company with another company and the idea is about the dangers of having an already dangerous idea and then giving it more power and where it would go from there and the consequences of that. Right, so is uh, is the screenplay finished now? It is pretty much finished. It just needs a few edits because it's extremely long, um, but it just needs a few tightening of the bolts here and there, um, and then it will be finished. I, I know it's n- notoriously difficult to get screenplays actually from the page onto well, celluloid or digital. W- what do you think the next steps are? Alan and I have been collaborating for want of a better word, for a long time now. And I think between the two of us, we both really like the idea and I think we want to see it made. So I think between the two of us, we're probably going to try and get that into fruition. And I guess Ellen being in, oh, near Los Angeles, it's uh, the centre of the filming world, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. OK, any, will you be leaning on your dad, Ellen? We're hoping that, that he'll you know, be in it. But he, he he is a wealth of knowledge, you know. He's he's been in the business since gosh, 1976, I think. So yeah, he he is he is my go-to for any kind of questions about anything relating to the film industry. Okay, well, while we're talking to Ellen, um, let's have a listen to the next track on your iPlayer, "Wooden Ships" by Crosby, Stills and Nash. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about this choice? This one I I chose because uh, my my dad used to sing it a lot. And it just, it's a very emotional song as well. Okay, thanks, Ellen. So uh, here we go with CSN and Wooden Ships.
something everybody everywhere does in the same talking about their new movie, Metronomes, and sharing their experiences and some of their favourite music. To contact the programme, please email plaintalking at seclosounds.org or just search for Plain Talking on Facebook. Wooden Ships was written in 1968 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on a boat owned by Crosby, who composed the music, while Paul Kantner and Stills wrote most of the lyrics. Kantner, a member of Jefferson Airplane at the time, could not be officially credited as one of the composers on the original release due to legal issues, but he is credited on the 2006 re-release. We then went on to discuss the various areas of expertise that Zach has developed over the past few years, and was there any one in particular he favoured? No, because they all, they're all interesting. Um, a lot of it was just dabbling just to see what it was like it was never really intentional um i think the writing and the music thing is really what i'm gonna do and the modeling thing happened by chance and was very temporary as was the photography that was really just to see if i could shoot something the way that i wanted to because obviously at some point i'll be behind a camera and i want to know if i was able to capture an image the way that i saw it in my head and I achieved that. Are there common skills between these different areas of expertise that you're building? So you mentioned about the photography. There's a skill within that, but when you come to filmmaking, I guess there's a commonality between those two things. With each of them, even the modelling, I guess, you just sort of you're picking up little things about how you want to then direct somebody. So obviously, with Alan got various scenes with her involved and I've got an idea of how I want the scene or the idea to look and so doing all the photography and everything else it's a for me anyway it was a good learning curve just to sort of get all those little skills in and know how I want to actually capture Ellen for example on screen how what sort of a director do you think you'll be that's. I think that question should be aimed at Ellen. I don't know, because Ellen's been talking to me enough to know what sort of person I am. I'll ask Ellen then. What, what sort of director do you think Zach will be? Oh, he's going to be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. He'll be, he'll be supportive and knowledgeable because he does have those experiences being a photographer and a model. He, he knows what it feels like to be on either side of the camera. So, Zach, I guess you're in your 30s now? And in the last few years, you've been doing quite a lot of different things. I mean, is, is there, as I mentioned, I said to Alan earlier, is there something that the, the, the older Zach would say to the young Zach 
to try and uh, make his life a little bit easier? Oh boy, there's tons of things I would say to that little whippersnapper. I would probably tell him to focus a bit more. Uh, I would probably... I don't know. Uh, that's a difficult question. Be- before the next track, just a quick question for both of you. So when when you're not uh, engaged in writing or acting or photo, photo- what, what do you do for relaxation? So first to, uh, to Zach. I'm, I don't relax. I tend to just write and make music and do photography. I don't think... I mean, I get chances occasionally to read some books no usually i'm working on something i don't relaxing is a weird word to me okay okay what about you ellen i um uh, i love to read and uh watch movies <laughs> and garden okay um well let's go back to zach and we'll look at track number six which is from uh, john murphy and the adagio in d minor why, why that particular track zach Pretty much the same response for the last two one, uh, pieces of music. Um, this is just an incredible composer, and this piece of music, I think, much like Ellen with her choice, it's just one of the very rare pieces that actually moves me to the point of tears. It's incredible. Powerful, yeah. powerful stuff. Okay, we'll mm. listen to uh, John Murphy and Adagio in D minor. 